There are two main kinds of image formats that you deal with in digital media. You have raster graphics and you have vector graphics. Uh, people often ask me why are Photoshop and Illustrator different programs if they're made by the same company and they both do graphics? Why not just combine them into one program? And the reason for that is that the programs actually work very differently. Today I'm going to talk about what makes a raster graphic raster and then later we'll talk about vector graphics and the differences between them. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. But to start with raster, I think it would be good to begin by talking about film. Now film is an analog medium. That means that there's an actual physical thing that is storing the image. In this case you're looking at two frames of film, very similar because there are 24 of these frames in every single second of film, but it's an actual piece of plastic that is pulled through a projector, the light shines through it, and on, on that plastic there is a photosensitive emulsion. It's actually usually made up of silver halide crystals, really tiny little crystals that create what we call film grain. Now here's a, a, an image with the grain very visible. And these tiny silver crystals are light sensitive. And when you take a picture with a film camera, the shutter opens and light hits those crystals and it has a chemical reaction that we can develop and create into an image. Whether that's black and white or color, these crystals um, have different properties that we can recognize. Now, digital, when we're working digitally, there are no actual physical things. It's all ones and zeros on a file. And that's what makes something digital versus analog. So instead of film grain, instead of actual silver crystals that are creating these colors and um, these contrasts and these values, instead we have pixels. If I look at this image here, what we have is a digital photograph, a very nice looking one of this mountain range. And if I zoom in on it enough, you can see that it is actually made up of a bunch of little boxes. Now Photoshop turns on when you get close enough this pixel grid that highlights each of the pixels in white. If I turn that off you can see a little bit more realistically what that is going to look like. And so every image that's digital, every time you watch a show on your high def television or you watch a movie on DVD or Blu-ray or you're streaming, those are always comprised of pixels. And the way that a computer remembers these pixels is it remembers the pixels location. And this is a bad analogy, but it's like Battleship a little bit. Um, you move over 20, you move down 5, here's the color at that location. And it remembers those colors as red, green, and blue. A combination of all those can create every other color. So the more of these pixels you have, the nicer the image, the more detailed the image is. Um, but unfortunately, the larger the file size gets too because it has to remember more pixels. And if you can get in close enough on any image or film that's digital, you will see those pixels. If I zoom in on another location, you can see again that it is made up of a bunch of boxes. So I will show you what the smallest possible image you can create is. If I go into Photoshop here and I create a brand new one pixel by one pixel image, and I'll have to zoom way in on it. This is the smallest possible image that we can create, a single pixel. Now what can I do with a single pixel? Mostly nothing. I can color it in. Let me change it to RGB here. But I can take this, this is uh, the pencil tool which allows me to draw a single pixel. And the smallest thing, the biggest thing I can do in here is just draw in a single pixel. If I wanted to draw the letter A, I really can't with a single pixel. What if I double that size and I change it to 2 pixels by 2 pixels? So now I, I'm twice as big on the file size, um, actually more than twice as big on the file size, but I also have um, 4 pixels now that I could do. And I can't do an awful lot here. I could do something that kind of looks like the um, Microsoft logo here. Oh, that's not a good yellow. Um, but with four pixels, there's not an awful lot I can do with either. And you can see that this has a resolution of two by two. That's how we measure resolution. When you have a 1080p high def TV at home, 1080 is how many pixels there are vertically. And there are 1920, 1920 uh, horizontal pixels. That's what we consider high def. With 4K, it's even more, a number I haven't memorized yet because I don't have a 4K TV. Um, but I can keep doing this. I can go up to, let's try, um, 5 pixels by 5 pixels. So now I have even more to work with here. 
So I could draw, can I draw my A now? Let's see. I'm getting close here. But I still only have 5 by 5 pixels to work with, so 25 pixels in total. Uh, let me go one more time here to 10 pixels by 10 pixels. Now I have 100 pixels to deal with, 10 by 10. This would be a, uh, if you had a TV that was at this resolution, it would be 10p, which would be unwatchable, most likely. But now I can actually start drawing things in here. So if I get out the, my brush again, I try the red. Can I draw a letter A now? Kind of looks like the old school games. So old Nintendo games had a resolution of, uh, it was very low, it was like 240 pixels across by I think a little bit more than that, maybe 300 pixels vertically. So you got a very pixelated look to things. Um, if you look at the games from the Atari era, think of Pac-Man or Adventure, it's because the resolution was low. They could only push so many pixels at a time. Um, now we have resolutions of, of 4K um, for a lot of things, so that that's pretty much you won't even see the pixels anymore. But this is a resolution that is starting to give me some give me something I can work with. Now, here's an issue with raster graphics. Can I make this image bigger? If I come here to my image size, I'm going to increase this. Right now it's 0.05 uh, square inches. I'm going to increase the size of this to 10 and I'm going to let it just automatically resample it. That means Photoshop is going to try to figure out the best way to make it larger. So now if I zoom way back on it, it looks all blurry and gross. It looks like it's tried. I can kind of see a little bit of that. But why is that? Why can't we make images larger when they're raster images without losing quality? Well, here's why. This is what Photoshop does. Originally when I drew this, let's, I'm just going to draw two uh, pixels. We'll say that these boxes that are perfectly square, because it's easy to draw, are perfect squares. And these are my pixels. And when I took my brush and I drew a little bit of red on, on, my, on that last one to create my letter A, one of those got filled in with like this. And let's say that this other box here was on the edge, so that one was white. Now when I made that image larger, what I really did was increased how many pixels were in between these. So now, maybe instead of just a red pixel and a white pixel, maybe this red pixel is here. Let me change my color back. And that white pixel is here. And now there's a very large gap between them that is also pixels. And so there are a bunch of pixels here that weren't there before because this is how we make images larger. More, uh, more size means more pixels. So how do we figure out what used to be here. This is the original red one. This is the original white one. And now Photoshop has to figure out, in this case, and this isn't accurate to how big I've made it. Uh, I increased it by a lot more than this. But let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pixels now that Photoshop has to do. So what does it do? Well, Photoshop guesses. It interpolates. It tries to figure out, well, if this was red and this was white, then these ones in between must have been some combination of red and white. And so it might put a slightly lighter red here, and a slightly lighter red here, and a lighter red here, until it eventually gets back to the original white. Now, this can work sometimes. If your file size is large enough originally and you're not making it that much bigger, you are not really going to notice the fact that this is what is happening. But I went from 0.05 inches to 10 inches. And that's a tremendous amount of pixels that Photoshop had to invent, had to make up. And it's pretty good at making them up, but not that good. Nothing is that good. And so what you get is this faded kind of look, just like this, which is what we saw when I zoom in on this. That is what Photoshop is trying to do. And you might even be able to see the pixels here if I turn my, um, my pixel grid back on. 
how it had to go from red. I mean, we're talking about 20 or 30 pixels it had to invent, and it does its best. But in general, the downside to raster graphics is that we just can't make them bigger without a loss of quality. Sometimes we can fudge it a little bit and get away and people won't notice the difference, but raster graphics are not designed to get bigger. Now, if we decide to make something smaller, that's not an issue. It's just throwing away pixels, um, which Photoshop's really good at. If I change this one, this image was originally 16 inches across. What if I make it um, 4 inches across? I'm not going to really see a difference in the quality, at least from a distance, because it's really easy to get rid of pixels. This is lower resolution now. There are less pixels that make up this image. Um, it's much smaller, but I'm not seeing that loss of quality. Uh, the plus side, the advantages of raster graphics are it's really the best way to recreate photographic images. If I'm shooting a, a movie or I'm taking a picture of a real thing, it's much easier to create a, a photorealistic look with pixels than it is with our other format, which is vector. Now lastly, there are a lot of different kinds of graphic, raster graphic formats. The most popular is probably your JPEG format, format or probably what you see the most often online. Uh, and JPEGs are really nice because they are compressed. It's actually a lossy compression, which means it takes away certain parts of the image, certain information, certain pixels that it doesn't think you'll miss. Now, in most cases, that's probably true. Sometimes the compression is noticeable. In fact, even if I zoom in on this one, you can kind of see some some of this here. These are called artifacts, and they're part of the compression process. But because it's compressed, because it's smaller, JPEGs are really nice for being generally high-quality compressed photos. We also have GIFs. GIFs are funny. GIFs are really low resolution. They can only do 256 colors, but they're still around because they can do animation. You can actually store multiple uh, raster images inside of a single GIF and then it plays them usually in a loop. And so you see GIFs a lot in internet culture. Um, they're very popular because they're tiny files and they can do animation. You also have PNGs. PNGs are one of the only formats that can remember transparency. So when you see this um, alpha channel, this transparency channel in Photoshop, if I save this as a JPEG, it would convert it back into white. JPEGs don't know what to do with transparency. But PNGs would take that and keep it transparent so that if I used it in a different program, it would still be invisible. Um, TIFF files, TIFs, are um, non-compressed files. They're very high quality, often used in printing. And so these are all formats that you'll probably run into when you're dealing with digital media. And they're all raster formats. They're all um, pixel-based. Now, next time, we'll talk about another kind of format called vector that isn't based off of pixels at all, which has its own advantages and disadvantages.